Hello, and welcome to today's throwback movie review of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Uh, with the upcoming film Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Grindelwald, I felt like that now was a good time to go back and revisit the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Um, this film is also known in other countries as Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Watching through it this time, I have a newfound appreciation for it. As uh, some of you do know, I had a family vacation to Florida in the last couple months that included some time at Universal Studios. This allowed me and my family to experience their wizarding world. And after having that experience and seeing the awe and the shock of this new world for Harry... I felt it along with him and this was the first time that I, I saw that and it was the first time where I really felt that Harry th thought and knew that he was destined for something more that there was something more than just being the kid who lives under the stairs and for a second hold on before I get any further how is CPS not called on on the Dursleys for this they're so horrid to Harry that you would think the natural human community would say nah -uh, nah nah bro this kid you nope bye take there goes uh Dudley and and Harry it's absolutely crazy to me to see that but then once we we see Harry go down uh into Diagon Alley that wonder that he there's more for him and speak into something i didn't notice until this this watch this this viewing was that when harry and the dursleys went to the zoo walking into the reptile house there were kids walking out in slytherin colors and that made me stop and go oh, this this place is foreshadowing a lot of stuff and and we get that later on in the movie as well when severus talks to Harry for the first time, asking him what he would get from a powdered root of asphodel and a mixture of wormwood. You, you think nothing of it. You just, at first, you think that Snape is, is testing him. He is a professor, and that's his job, to see how prudent his students are. When in reality, if you use the uh, oh, Victorian flower language, you find that asphodel is a lily, that means uh, my regret um, is with you to the grave. And then that wormwood is also meaning an abstinence typically going with sorrow. What he was literally saying to Harry, if Harry knew, was that I literally regret, no, not literally, I bitterly regret Lily's death, which was the, the name of his mom. Well, Harry's mom, and that will become uh, a bigger theme later on in, in other films when we when we talk about them as well. Uh, speaking of Snape, uh, he is played by the late great Alan Rickman, who puts in another stellar performance here. And there isn't much I can say. He he lived Severus Snape and just brought him to life magnificently. Uh, another great performance was that of. Uh, what was his name? David Bradley. Uh, he played Mr. Fitch, Filch, I believe, and he just really played that caretaker well, and and loved his his cat and really showed it off well. The practical effects hold up magnificently. The CGI, on the other hand, does not, as this film is about 17 years old at the time of of this review. You, you can see there's there's sponginess and and things that come with smaller budgets and with the age of the film. But the one thing that does age perfectly is John Williams' score. He was able to, once again, draw you into the movie and really show you these themes and, and to just to tug on you just a little bit, saying this is that, and to, to, to really bring you into the film. The one other thing that I didn't notice until this play th this playthrough, I I keep adding it to like it's a video game and it, and it, and it's not. I mean, it could be with the Wizarding World, 
But of course, there's those rumors flying about, which I secretly hope they're true, because I would love to be a wizard. Um, <laughs> but the instance with the troll in, in during Halloween, that is the moment that solidify Ron, Harry, and Hermione's friendship and made them almost inseparable for the rest of their lives. And it's it was that near-death experience that really brought them together and it shows just how tight of a bond that that 11 year olds can can handle so uh, I would say absolutely this is more of a kids film than anything we don't get a lot of the darker themes that we'll get later on as these characters age and grow but they start to take take shape even though they're not fully there yet we get more later on uh, to dig into these characters and and the background characters but this is a very solid start to bring you into that world to show you the awe and magic and just to make you believe that there's something more to you than what you truly are i recommend this film for everyone if you if you just want to believe in something more and just take take a take a minute watch us with your family and just enjoy your time it's a really fun film to watch as in a family setting. But uh, with that said, I hope you all have a great night.